Welcome to School Matters. I'm Joni Copas, and today we're going to be talking to Hamilton City School District Superintendent, Mr. Larry Knapp. So welcome, Larry. Thank you very much. Glad, glad to be here. We're glad to have you on the show. First, let's talk a little bit because you're originally from Northern Ohio. Yes. But you came down here to go to Miami University and yes, never I left. Did. I was uh, born and raised in Oberlin, Ohio, a little college town up north, uh, and uh, came down to uh, Oxford uh, in what, 1975, mm -hmm. and uh, went to school down here, got my bachelor's and master's both from Miami, and then uh, actually started my uh, career teaching in Middletown. It's, it's close to 40 years, I think you said. Uh, I just finished my 39th year in education with 35 of those being in administration. Oh, yes. that's great. So yeah, you yes. started at Middletown. Where else have you been and what other uh, positions? Well, I was at Middletown for my first uh, 20 years, 21 years, and then uh, went over to uh, Edgewood City Schools. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where my family lived and my kids were in school, so that was a, a good match for me. I went over there as uh, assistant superintendent, working with Tom York when he was the mm -hmm. superintendent, and then finished up the last two years there as superintendent mm -hmm. as well. And you have five, five sons? Five sons. Uh, one graduated from Middletown, the other four from Edgewood. Mm -hmm. And they are all now through college and out of the house, grown and gone. and Having grandchildren? Getting us Life's, grandbabies, uh -huh. yes, absolutely. Good so. for you. So um, you've been to various places, and then several years ago you came to our school district as business manager. Right. And we immediately put you in several different projects, right. one of which was the service and operations facility. That was uh, waiting for me when I got here, the mm -hmm. former uh, business business manager John Thomas uh, had started that project. Uh, the majority of the planning was completed. There were some uh, last minute details that needed to be ironed out, but we uh, broke ground for that facility, yes, in September, that mm -hmm. fall. Mm -hmm. uh, matter of fact, it was on my birthday, I remember. Well, there you go. And uh, worked through that project for about the next, uh, what was it, a little bit over a year, mm -hmm. and then opened that facility up in, in August. Uh, the following year. And same as really the school-based health center. That was beginning and, and actually I think we opened it, but then you sort of took care of the final details of school-based health well, center. Well, we, we went through that entire construction project. Mm -hmm. uh, involved a lot more with the planning of that as well. Uh, that of course was tied in with primary health. They were uh, a driving force in that and the community foundation uh, stepped up and helped us uh, fund that, that change over at Garfield Middle School. Mm -hmm. uh, we converted that some uh, coaches rooms and locker rooms and those types of things into the school-based health center, uh, which has turned out to be a great resource mm -hmm. for our kids. Right, and a great partnership with the Community Foundation and Primary Health Solutions Absolutely. as well. And Absolutely. And another project, because you weren't busy enough, was the um, buying the, the Miami School, the old senior citizen slash partners in prime. Absolutely, buying back a, a school building mm -hmm. uh, that had been a part of the community for for years and years and years and had been, uh, was with uh, the, the Senior Center mm -hmm. uh, for a long time and we bought that building back and, and turned it back into a school. Mm -hmm. Brought it back to uh, current standards mm -hmm. for school buildings and with the uh, climate control and all of that, a complete upgrade on the HVAC central uh, unit and uh, that has turned out to be a great resource for us as well. Uh, that being the registration office, mm -hmm. and then also uh, our blended learning academy mm -hmm. uh, upstairs there. Right. Where, where just this year, since that, that building opened in August, mm -hmm. and uh, to date we are well over 60 graduates uh, from that program already. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, not to mention, I think we've enrolled over 2,000 students. I think so, yes. Uh, and it's centrally located, facility. yes, so it helps everybody. Yep. It's a one-stop shop, as we say. Yep, and we're able to uh, do everything from uh, find out uh, needs for the kids, uh, test our preschoolers, mm -hmm. uh, enroll all of our kindergarten students every year mm -hmm. uh, through that facility, and able to meet people's needs as they come in the door. Mm -hmm. And they don't have to run over town from building to building if they've got multi-age kids. Right to do those things, so yes. Very customer friendly. Yes, so worked perfect. out very well. And then the other, another project you worked on as well is the Virgil M. Schwarm Stadium, updating that. And that project continues, and something that I was able to uh, hand over to Jeff Kilby, who mm -hmm. is our new business manager. Yes, um, as he's you know, been with the district for a while. He has nice been, guy, great guy. he's been here longer than I have, as right? a matter of fact. So 
but uh, we're in the second phase of that program at the stadium. Uh, last year we also uh, replaced the turf, the original turf that was in that stadium, um, and actually added to it as well. Uh, we covered one of the D zones, mm -hmm. which is the end of and the so. field uh, because the track goes around it. Mm -hmm. Uh, this year we are replacing that, uh, the running track mm -hmm. as well, and that will also cover the other D zone. Mm -hmm. So not only is it a uh, refurbishment of the original facilities, it's actually an upgrade as well. And that, those updates should last, what is it, about 10 years, 12 years? Oh, uh, if it lasts as long as the last one did, it'd be great. That right. track, I think, lasted 16 or 18 right. years. Mm -hmm. So we're hopefully, you know, with good maintenance and all of that, we can make those things last. Our turf outlasted the expected uh, length of time on that as well. So, and, and that's, that's used a lot. And it speaks Middle to school, high school, soccer, football, band. Absolutely, all of those uh, groups get to use mm -hmm. those facilities, and we bring in uh, a lot of regional and district events also mm -hmm. uh, to to showcase our uh, facilities with uh, Southwestern Ohio. And people always remark at, right. at how nice they are and how well taken care of they are and our maintenance crews and custodial crews do a great job keeping those places up. Definitely a source of pride I think for our community because uh, you, like you said we have all these tournaments and people are coming into Hamilton and it's kudos to the to the staff at Hamilton High and, and your maintenance crew to keep it um, looking good. Absolutely. Okay let's talk about um, since it's it's such a, a key topic now safety and security in schools because we have lots of things in place, but more to come. So first, let's talk about our safety and security committees that we've had for many years now. That committee was in place uh, when I got here. Uh, it had been uh, evolving uh, mm -hmm. as, we, as we went along. My first year here, we went kind of through a, re, a revamping of that safety committee, uh, making sure that we had uh, representation from every single building on that committee. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then also made sure that all of our first responders in the area uh, were a part of that committee on a regular basis as well. That's mm -hmm. uh, Hamilton Police Department, Fire Department, and also our county uh, emergency management associate or like, agency. Again, strong partnerships. Can't uh, do it alone. Absolutely. And these are the folks who know uh, what we need in our schools to keep our kids and our staff safe and they work with us on a regular basis. And then, of course, this past year, uh, we've expanded uh, our school resource officer program. Mm -hmm. Before, uh, it was only at a few buildings, and we now have uh, five full-time school resource officers in all of our secondary buildings, and then those gentlemen also have responsibilities at all of our elementaries as well. Yeah. So their presence is felt throughout the district. Yeah, that's for sure. Also, what I like too, a couple months ago, you mentioned Butler County um, ESC Educational uh, Service Center. Um, they also had a security and safety roundtable discussion. So all the superintendents right. and security people from all the school districts met and had a really deep, I think, a rich discussion on what works, what doesn't. Talked a lot about best practices and uh, from what other districts and uh, different agencies have learned over the years as to what works and what doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And uh, not only were we able to pick up a, uh, some good ideas, but it also reinforced that we are doing many things right. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to think, and, and from, from what I've gathered in talking with other superintendents, that our comprehensive safety program that we have in place here at Hamilton City Schools is really as good or better than the majority of, of safety programs around southwestern Ohio. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of components in place uh, that are needed. One of those, uh, and probably the most uh, important as far as ongoing safety, uh, is the mental health component uh, that a lot of people are struggling with and being able to get services for their kids. Mm -hmm. um, through the efforts of Mike Wright, our director of uh, pupil services, mm -hmm. uh, he has been working with MindPeace, which is a local counseling agency that has been helping us um, assess each one of our buildings uh, as an individual site uh, with individual needs and then pairing 
those needs with uh, particular agencies mm -hmm. that are in the area and through at no cost to the district we are able to uh, offer sites uh, in each of our buildings to offer programming uh, to our kids who are in needs of those services. So there should be a person in each building have their own office working with the staff and the students to shore some of that up. And it's going to be more than one person. Mm -hmm. um, in, in some of our schools the need is such that we could have two, three, or four people there mm -hmm. uh, on a daily basis uh, providing services. Right now uh, at the end of the summer about half of our buildings will have programming identified and people on site. By the end of this coming school year, by the end of the 18-19 school year, all 100% of our sites will have counseling services available on a daily basis. Oh, that's and fantastic. again, the, the most important part, uh, or an important part, the most important part of course that they're getting services. Mm -hmm. um, and, and those services add to our safety barriers mm -hmm. because uh, if, if those people aren't getting those services, then they're dealing with anger and frustration issues and those types of things, and, right. and that's when you have safety problems. Mm -hmm. The other part of this is, is that this is no cost to our, our taxpayers here in Hamilton. Uh, this is all uh, done through uh, Medicaid funding mm -hmm. and those types of things. These different groups uh, fund or they bill that separately uh, for their own agencies. So it's a win-win situation. We just have to provide the space for them to do it. And you said our district is really on the forefront of the mental health. Absolutely. When I tell. talk to other superintendents in the area, uh, they are they're amazed mm -hmm. at, at where we're at and that we were able to, to hit the ground running with this. And again, uh, Mike Wright has done a fabulous mm -hmm. job in coordinating this effort. It's a big, big undertaking. Mm -hmm and our kids uh, and staff and community are the ones that are going to benefit. Yes, very good. Also, the City of Hamilton's Director of Public Safety, Scott Scramese, talked to you about a, a company called Fusion. Well, it's not, it, that's actually a, 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 an agency that is tied in with Ohio Homeland Security and then also uh, at a national level as well, and mm -hmm. that is a greater Cincinnati Fusion Center, okay. uh, which is an information gathering and distribution point for this region. Um, Scott approached us with an opportunity uh, for all of our buildings uh, to train uh, ILOs, which are information liaison officers. Um, and, and how this all ties in is that you know, when an event takes place or, or something happens here, or it happens at a school, uh, say like uh, the most recent event uh, out in California, mm -hmm. um, shock waves go out mm -hmm. through uh, media, social media, all of those things, and it heightens awareness and concerns mm -hmm. over those things. The faster we can get that information and the faster we know what's going on, prepares us so that in case we have to work with a copycat situation. Mm -hmm. uh, you see, everyone sees how school s s crisis situations have evolved mm -hmm. over the years and it's important to recognize how those things evolve and what this next step might be mm -hmm. so that we can continue to evolve our safety program and continue to make it safer and better for for our kids and our community. Right, it was great that Scott reached out to us and told us Absolutely, about that. that's a, a resource uh, that we wouldn't normally have. Mm -hmm. um, everyone, and, and it's all of our, our, our district-wide safety committee, our building representatives are our assistant principals at each one of those buildings. Uh, they are actually the liaison between the committee and then their building and then they're also responsible for all the things happening at the building level. Uh, there are so many different components that we are concerned with, with everything from the uh, emergency operation plans that are required by ODE mm -hmm. uh, to local uh, ordinances that we have to be concerned with, with coordinating those drills that go on in all of the schools day in and day out. Uh, fire codes uh, mm -hmm. that are a safety concern still and all those things. Um, all of those things and, and many more need to, you need to have that coordinated at the building mm -hmm. level. So that contact force now is uh, the assistant principal and they are going to be the, emerge the uh, 
information liaison officer mm -hmm. also. So those people wear a lot of hats. Our building principals have, you know, school safety is one piece. Uh, it's a big piece. Um, but we wanted to have one person who could concentrate their efforts on that, and that's how we're handling it here. That's very good. Another um, training that we're doing is the Stop the Bleed program. Explain that's, that. that. And that was a, <laughs> as a result of the uh, roundtable discussions that we had with the superintendents mm -hmm. and, and uh, emergency responders uh, back in the spring. Uh, the Stop the Bleed program is like a triage uh, type training that our nurses will be trained in. All of our nurses, all of our building nurses, will now become trainers for their own buildings. And uh, that's in case you run into a situation, and it could be a, a, a shooting situation, it could be just somebody getting hurt. Mm -hmm. It could be because of storm damage somebody right. gets hurt. But if you have people available, a lot of people available, who know how to stop people from bleeding, then this is going to give them a better opportunity and higher survival rates right. uh, from a situation. So uh, that will become a part of our ongoing training that we do with our staff every year. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a whole battery of things that we uh, do uh, additional training with, every, from the ALICE training right. to Heimlich to mm -hmm. using the AEDs. Right. Uh, uh, there's and this is another one that we'll be doing so, as well. Yeah, there's a multi multitude of things. Right. Another thing you talked about the the countywide superintendents uh, meetings, Butler County Educational Service Centers again working with the superintendents to perhaps put on a countywide um, safety levy. Absolutely, and it's it's beyond the superintendents. It's with the school boards. Mm -hmm. That's where how this is going to be handled. Um, as you know, we 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 have a school safety crisis mm -hmm. going on is mm -hmm. what it boils down to. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, a couple of weeks doesn't go by that we don't all witness uh, another school shooting mm -hmm. uh, via our, our, our phones or our televisions mm -hmm. or, or any of that. And uh, we have to address it, and we are addressing it. Um, through that uh, approach uh, are increasing costs, though. That's, that's all there is to it. Uh, you know, you're adding school personnel. We've added five resource officers. We want to add more. Mm -hmm. We're going to add more. Mm -hmm. uh, there are what are the security cameras? The security cameras alone. Uh, thankfully, with all of our new buildings, we have a great security system right. in place with our cameras. We have over 800 cameras in place throughout our buildings. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's wonderful. But the point is, is that there's other detection devices that we need to put in also, mm -hmm. uh, window breaking glass uh, sensors mm -hmm. and those mm -hmm. types of things. And uh, as we go through our buildings and assess where we are at, are at it, with each one of our buildings, and that's an ongoing process that we're doing with our first responders right now, they're telling us, well, you could add this and you could add this and this is the best place uh, for you to, to make uh, an impact mm -hmm. with the finances that you're going to invest in this. Right. Um, this is how we can do this, and whether it's the adding of the film on the glass or the, uh, the individual door barricade systems, mm -hmm. those types of things, those recommendations all come with additional costs. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at a countywide um, safety, school safety levy is what it boils down mm -hmm. to. And the Butler County Educational Service Center is leading that charge for us. They're getting things organized uh, at a county level. Every district in Butler County uh, will have an opportunity to be a part of this levy. Uh, we're looking at it uh, being a 1.5 mil levy. That mm -hmm. is what is being discussed right now. Mm -hmm. um, and it will generate money based on our valuation here mm -hmm. in Hamilton right. for, for the Hamilton schools. Um, and it could be a, a, a wonderful opportunity for us to have funding now for that program and funding in the future. Mm -hmm. It's a 10 year levy. Uh, I don't think that the school safety crisis is going to go away. I mm -hmm. think this is gonna be an ongoing thing, just another uh, responsibility that we have to take on and, and obviously we take very seriously. So we need the money to fund it. Well, and then also I know you're you're very much watching both state and federal legislation as well. It's impossible bills Abs and absolutely. Uh, and and it's funny how when those bills get start 
when they start off, they start off one thing and they kind of evolve mm -hmm. as they go through the process and, and all of that. But yes, we are keeping a t an eye on those as well. Um, those could be great shots in the arm for us mm -hmm. uh, in, in meeting the needs that we have with our facilities. Uh, generally, those types of funds are much more directed. Mm -hmm. um, with this countywide levy, uh, it, this is ongoing funding which is gonna be available year after year after year, and it is much wider. We could use this funding for personnel, we could use this funny money for facilities, we could use this money for uh, counselors. So it's um, up to each indiv individual school district how they wanna do that. Exactly. Looking at their own um, situations and e the needs. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, it's good to know that, you know, not only here locally, you know, we're being very proactive, but mentioned the state and federal and um, you're right it's it's going to be an ongoing situation but it's it's nice to know that I mean even even now this summer we're doing some SWAT training with the Hamilton Police and Hamilton De Fire Department. Absolutely we, we need to get the word out on right. that. I think it's on June 20th mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be doing some SWAT training with our local HPD uh, they're gonna they like to use our schools for scenario training uh, which is advantageous for them it's advantageous for us it's mm -hmm. it's good uh, uh, if that situation were ever to arise. Uh, but there'll be a lot of activity going on at Hamilton High School that day. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, I know I've signed up to be, a, mm -hmm. uh, to be uh, an actor or a uh, survivor, I hope. Right, yeah, to say they have both <laughs> staff that. and students signing up to, to participate in that, which I think, again, helps the staff and the students to realize, you know, what does happen. Cause you can prepare and prepare and have you know everything you know one through ten a list of things you should do, but until you get to the actual situation, it could vary depending on the because each situation is unique. I think Madison uh, mm. local school district was a good example of that. And talking with uh, Curtis Philpot, the superintendent out there, um, everything you know they had done preparation for that, but it really showed them things that they hadn't prepared for. Right. Um, and that was a big part of the discussion that we had with the superintendents at that summit. Um, what are the things that you don't think about that you need to prepare for? Reunification is a big piece. Right. Uh, and we are, uh, that's what our training this year with the district is going to uh, start with, is the reunification process. It's, it's what do you do after the crisis? Right. Um, and, and you have to be ready for all those things. So. And you mentioned re reunification. We also are cr creating a trifold uh, pamphlet that'll go out to all the parents too. And part of that is to explain to them some of the, the terminologies or things that we do or, or in a case of a situation, how will we communicate? So again, trying to let the parents be aware as much as we can of situations, knowing that each situation's can be very unique. I, I hope that all of these, this trifold of information that we're putting together, it talks about different situations and how parents can uh, support what we're doing and work with us cooperatively if, right. we, if we get into a, a crisis situation in a building. Um, I hope all of those go right up on the, the refrigerator mm -hmm. uh, in everybody's home with a refrigerator magnet or gets stuck on a, their cork board or whatever, right. so it's there as a reference for them. So they know what shelter in place things. means, what's yeah. locked down. We mentioned the word Alice, what, do, what does each of those letters stand for? So it's important not only obviously for our staff, our students, but for the parents, so they can have a, a calmness as well and know that if there is a situation, you're best to, to stay home, we'll take care of your child. You can't get to there because of a traffic. Madison, like you said, was a perfect example of that. Right. And, and it's the, the beauty of an ongoing program and is that the kids, the students, uh, are getting trained at an early age. Mm -hmm. and, and they come back every year and they get trained again and they get trained again and they get trained again and they get trained again. Um, at this recent situation, it turned out to be not so much of a Christmas at the Kenwood Mall. Mm -hmm. uh, I talked to some uh, first responders that worked around that. And the beauty of that situation was the students that were in that mall, they knew what to do. Mm -hmm. They knew to, to either get out of there or to barricade themselves somewhere so that uh, the shooter, they weren't in sight of what they perceived to be a shooter. Right. It turned out somebody hitting a, trying to break into a store with a hammer. Right. Uh, but the, that training carries over with them to other areas. 
so that's why we're going with the trifold now so mm -hmm. that we can make sure that our parents understand what we're doing as well so we can all make the schools a safer place. Well, we talk about, too, if there's a situation, you know, we're very fortunate that our students, if they, they see something, they say something, because that can really minimize a lot of things. But Absolutely. We, we instill that in our students, but it's important for parents and really everybody. If you see something, you need to say something. At, at, and that is <clears throat> critical to our school resource officers. Mm -hmm. uh, the relationships that those officers have with the students in their buildings is is really our best deterrent to something going wrong mm -hmm. because so many times there, we find out after a situation happens uh, that somebody knew about it. Mm -hmm. Somebody knew that was going on. They weren't working by themselves or they had said something to somebody else about that. So having that trust relationship with those officers is critical to school safety. And we are so blessed to be able to have Craig Buchheit as our uh, police chief and his dedication uh, to our schools and our district and our community uh, to make sure that we have the right people in our building as, mm -hmm. as school resource officers. Those guys are well trained and have the right personality to do what they're doing and working with our kids. Well, I think it's safe to say that we truly are taking safety and security very seriously and and we will continue to do so because I'm sure the conversation will continue. It's not going to go away. Right. It's something we need to continue right. with. So. Let's talk about next school year because we just got some good news about a uh, $400,000 grant. Absolutely. For reading. From the Howe so Department of Education, uh -huh. that is our Striving Readers Grant. Uh, it will tie in very well with our new literacy collaborative mm -hmm. as well and give us some additional monies for more training and, and more supplies for those programs. Uh, as a matter of fact, matter of fact uh, Mike Holbrook, our associate uh, superintendent, is in Columbus right now with Danielle Romine mm -hmm. and, and Bob Hancock, our treasurer, is up there also, and they're getting the information. He's making sure we get that money. <laughs> get, make sure we get the money, <laughs> right. and, and we understand how we can, how set, we can spend yes, it right. and, and make, again, make the best use of our money. Again, it's a continu continuation of programs that we have started, and we want to continue that because we, we see some great... Um, great dividends and buy-in with that. We, we are. We've seen improvement with our test scores and some initial indications. Our, our test scores are going to continue to escalate. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're seeing good things and I think we're going to have some real exciting information to share here soon in that regard too. That's good. And another so. part is Aspire, which used to be called the, the ABLE and they changed the word now to Aspire, which is your adult uh, we used to be adult basic literacy um, education, education program. but now we have yes. some exciting news about that, Aspire. Well, we, uh, there are fi actually 54 of those programs in the state. Um, Hamilton, our, our program, uh, ran by Tana Eubank, um, is ranked eighth uh, in the state. So we are in the top 15% with that program and, and how well they work with those folks and get those uh, adults placed into to further their education or get them employed. Um, to that end, uh, the state is wanting us to take over another uh, local group, uh, Aspire program, mm -hmm. and to, actually it's going to about double our size. So we're expanding the program. We're not only mm -hmm. going to be here in Hamilton, but we will have sites countywide mm -hmm. as well. Um, at that doubling the size is going to about, is more than doubling the uh, the funding that comes along with that from the state, mm -hmm. there's no uh, local monies involved in this as an all, mm -hmm. at all. Uh, we're simply taking on a larger responsibility and they see us as a model for the program and they want us to be able to, to do that countywide now. Well, so. then we commend Tanya and her staff. They must, you know, obviously they've done well and that's why the, the state looks for us to expand. And their reward is a bigger and better program. Yeah, there so, you go. There well, we go. sounds like next school year is gonna be um, busy and exciting and we're anxious to get started. I know everybody thinks the summer is a is slow time, but we were talking before the show, it's it's a different kind of busy. You're wrapping up one school year, beginning right. things for the next. And and we're looking to uh, also the, the transition this coming year at Hamilton High School of going from our career technical education program um, and that changing gears and transitioning over to Butler Tech, mm -hmm. which will be taking that program over 
completely in the 2019-2020 school year. So this is the year so, of transition. Yes, we're mm -hmm. working with uh, closely with Butler Tech to that end as well. So lots of things going on. I have to on. say, yeah, you're not just lots sitting at your things. desk, are you? Yes. Lots of good things going on. Well, that's great. So. Well, we're excited to have you, and I'm sure we'll have you back to talk about some more exciting things. And um, appreciate you spending some time with us. Absolutely. And uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to encourage our public, anytime you have questions, feel free to give us a call. If you want to reach out to me individually, please feel free to do that at the board office, and I'll try to get an answer for you or, or help you with if there's a concern. Very so, good. Well, thank you. Absolutely. Appreciate thank that. you. Sure. And for TV Hamilton, I'm Joni Kopis, and we'll see you next time on School Matters because school matters. <laughs>